when we're looking at controlling the cost of cattle, genetics is often overlooked as a way to do that. Here to talk more about it is Dave Lawman. Dave, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Austin. Good. Thanks for coming out. Oh, thanks for having us. We love the North Range. Let's talk about genetics. What are producers looking for? What are they getting that they really maybe shouldn't be worried so much about? Well, uh, you know, when we talked about our enterprise budgets, uh, a big chunk of that enterprise budget, 53% is, is feed costs. And so you're right in that genetics uh, plays a big role in how big that, that portion of the budget is. Uh, what we've noticed is that the genetic trend for, let's say, milk production uh, in the Angus, well, particularly the Angus breed, which is, is the most popular or numerous uh, cattle breed in the state of Oklahoma and in the country right now, the genetic trend for milk and is, is increasing. And we think that maybe in some cases we've really overshot uh, what the forage can support in terms of milk production. Uh, it's not only the Angus breed, to just mention that because we've got a real clear uh, genetic trend there, but other breeds as well. So what we're talking about here, it's they're getting more potential than maybe it, it, the cost to feed that to that potential is maybe not worth it. Yeah, more, it, that's right. More milk is associated with higher maintenance costs. You can think of maintenance costs as the overhead cost to run the factory. Okay, so if you have more uh, milk production, Assuming you have the nutrients to uh, support that milk production, you should get more milk. But, uh, but what I'm saying is that if you, once you get beyond an optimal point, the forage won't support the additional milk production, but yet 365 days out of the year, you have higher maintenance cost, which is cost that's different from just the, the cost to support milk production, which is, you know, only lasts for 200, 210 days, depending on when the calves are weaned. If uh, you had the genetic potential for milk, but the forage can't support it, you might not actually get more milk production. You just have higher costs and no bigger calves. And that, I think that's the primary concern that we're talking about. So uh, what we've just been cautioning producers about is just don't overdo a genetic potential for milk. And, and by keeping an eye on that and make sure that you know calf weaning weight and cow costs are kind of optimally balanced, uh, we can minimize that cost of production or that feed cost portion of the budget and, uh, and get as much weaning weight as we can. And we're not just talking about milk production here, that's a good example, but there, there are other genetic traits we're concerned about as well. There sure is. Another one uh, is just cow size. And uh, you know, we ha in our cow herd here at the North Range, we have uh, just a handful of 900-pound cows, and we have a handful of 1,600-pound cows, well, maybe 1,500-pound cows, and, and everything in between. They'd average about 1,150 to 1,200 pounds, and that's probably a pretty common commercial cow herd. Uh, but we've, we've just run an interesting uh, analysis on the records in the past six years of the North Range cows, and what we discovered is that for each additional 100 pounds of mature cow weight, we get about an additional 10 pounds of calf weaning weight. Hmm. Okay, so then if you think about the cost to keep that extra 100 pounds of cow weight around a year, you know, it's probably in the 15 to $20 per cow added cost. Okay. But the 10 pounds of calf is only worth eight to $10. So you're not getting a full return on your money there. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, for us, the, the more optimal cow size is that 11 to 1200 pound cow. We probably don't need the 14, 1500 pound cows here. So I guess the, the kind of the take home message to producers, even though it's easy to say, well, bigger is better, more is better. Yeah. It's not necessarily, we're looking for a midpoint that's, that's the best return. That's right, and, and finding that balance, I agree, is, is certainly a challenge. Uh, but producers just kind of have to pay attention over time. If they notice that the reproductive efficiency in the cow herds may be declining, or maybe the cows are thinner than they used to be, they may have too much milk, the cows may be too big. Uh, if their feed costs keep creeping up, but reproductive efficiency and weaning weight stay in the same, well, that may be telling you that, that uh, the genetic potential for, say, milk or mature size has, you, maybe you've overdone it a little bit. All right, so that once again talks to that record keeping ability, just maintaining yeah. good business sense. Exactly, yeah, good, good records will eventually reveal all of those things and kind of help you discover that optimal balance. All right, Dave, thank you so much for having you us bet. out again. Appreciate it. Always informative.